I'm Nina Kirli of WAMDA, and we're live in the WAMDA studio with Rasha Khoury of Dia Boutique and Dia Style, Hi, um, a high-end fashion e-commerce site. Rasha, how are you? Very well, very well. It's been an exciting few days here at ArabNet, so uh, it's nice to be here and part of the, the whole networking and learning and hearing and seeing and exploring part of the tech world of the Middle East. So Very cool. Yeah. Did you attend the industry days as well? I did. I, I uh, attended the developer days and the industry days, sort of trying to see a little bit of what kind of talent is coming out, what kind of ideas from the development side are available um, as we start to look at growing our development team. So definitely trying to get a feeling for what's out there um, in the local market. Of course. So you just launched Dia Style this uh, fall or I guess early this year, Yeah. and um, out of the Dia Boutique brand, Correct. why did you decide to launch Dia Style? What's different about it? So I'll start with Dia Boutique because I think that'll give a little bit of a, a ground. So Dia Boutique we launched about a year and a half ago, almost two years ago, and it um, it is more of a showcase and selling environment for independent young and upcoming designers. Um, it's a really great platform in English and Arabic. Um, but one of the things we noticed was our customer base was actually being more in the UK and the US. And our excitement was actually to serve uh, the Middle Eastern fashionista. Um, so what we decided to do was to look and try and do a bit of research about what she wants. And we actually found out that um, our customer is actually looking much more for branded international luxury goods. So what we ended up doing was this uh, this uh, winter was launching Dia Style and Dia Style is available in English and Arabic and it is a luxury shopping and community platform for the Middle Eastern woman and fashionista. And so how did you bring those brands to the Middle East? Can you talk about how you cultivated the partnerships? Yeah. What did you do to localize? What we've done is actually we're working with some of the, we've selected actually some of the best e-tailers online already available in Europe and the US. So we work with the retailers like uh, Netta Porte, we're working with Selfridges, we're now about to add Saks.com, Saks Fifth Avenue. So we're really working with a select group of retailers that we know are already well established and well recognized, already deliver um, a great service to the market here. So that's how we selected those partners. Um, and then the big sort of added value is that we've actually translated all of these products into Arabic. So it's the first time that now a, a customer can go online and search for Christian Louboutin in Arabic or Prada in Arabic and we have something like 600 designers translated into Arabic off of around 50,000 products in English. So it's a very big database of products that are on trend, on season. Um, some of them are even exclusives that are now available into the Middle Eastern market which wouldn't be available in the malls and offline. Have you seen any other e-commerce sites follow that trend and use your your dictionary of Arabic terms for high-end fashion items? Uh, not yet. Um, I think that it's still a bit too early to see that happen because there's a lot of um, being able to access that product, which will take a bit of time. Maybe it, what will happen is it'll happen more on a content perspective before it happens on an e-commerce perspective. But um, I think once we have more people using those terms, it's actually going to be a, a good thing because that means that the ability to search, the awareness of those search terms, the awareness of the, that knowledge of product in Arabic becomes even wider and therefore the accessibility to the Arabic customer online becomes even greater. So um, I think it will sort of take a little bit of time, but as we've been hearing at this conference, content in Arabic is still very uh, limited and therefore the more we start to see it online, the more it will increase the online capability on that. So, yeah. Well, you might be opening doors. Well, hopefully, in the in the world of fashion, we hope so. Luxury fashion, we hope so. So. Yeah. And so, who how have you seen the growth since you launched, and who are you targeting exactly? So, we've actually had some really exciting growth. Um, we just launched a few weeks ago, and the numbers are really way beyond our expectations. Um, we've been very quiet because we were sort of just trying to test and see where our interests would come from. But really interestingly, it's been um, the three major markets have been Egypt, Saudi and Lebanon. Um, and most of it has actually been natural growth. We've sort of only been socially media active, but not very financially marketing active. So it's been quite interesting to see the natural growth that we've been able to grow over the last few weeks since we launched. 
And are your customers typically very comfortable with the interface and they know what they're searching for, or are you finding yourself having to do a lot of customer service to explain the interface to them? Well, you know, it's funny. We have a feedback form on our, on our site because we're sort of in the beta phase and just trying to really get a use, and we haven't gotten any complaints about user journey at all. Um, at one point, we had a little problem about um, something small, which we've now fixed, and we get a little bit of feedback now back and forth. But really, in general, it's I think the use of the site, because it's very clear, it's very clean, it makes it very easy to navigate throughout the site. Um, and even we have in the collections, which is our play section, I thought it would be a little bit difficult for uh, our users, and some of the, the designs that would come out would be very basic. The stuff that I've seen online, some of it looks like it could be in, in, in very important fashion editorial magazines. So it's quite nice to actually know that our customer seems to be very comfortable in a shopping community uh, website like ours. I see. Talk to me about the community side. So it sounds like it's not just, unlike net -porté, it's not just a you know a site where I can go and purchase clothes. There's also a play section, and you're integrating with social media. Correct. What's your goal with that? Well, I think one of the things we noticed as well, talking back to the, the time when we were had Dia Boutique, is we realized that the Arab woman online likes to communicate with her peers. Um, we know that forums are very important in particularly the Gulf markets for women. So one of the things we tried to do was also to create an environment where women could also converse about fashion and also start to say, what product do I like? Or what should I wear to a wedding? Or what did you think about this? Or I went to this fashion show and fought, bought, bought this dress and sort of creating an environment purely driven around the world of fashion. And then within that, creating a section about like playing with fashion. So as I mentioned, these sort of collections that you can create that sort of give you an idea of your look and your style. Um, we're going to be adding more features. One is sort of a, a quiz about you know your style and your lifestyle, which can then also you integrate into what products you should wear and how you should wear them and what your things friends will think about it. So, very much playing on the the side of user user generated content, social media content, and very much interaction in, among peers. And we also have stylists involved as well. So also getting it. Um, advice and guidance about styles and shopping online through our sort of stylist uh, guides. I see it. I guess you're saying that your users are very comfortable in this section, um, and it's probably it's quite early on since your launch. But can you can you speak uh, to any degree about the percentages of women that are on the site actually also really engaging with the community as opposed to just shopping? Well. Um, I don't have the numbers, but we uh, we did a competition on uh, Facebook for um, winning, I think, a pair of sunglasses. And it was very interesting to see the reaction right away. Our numbers sort of just doubled and tripled, and the reaction of creating collections and being involved tripled overnight. So definitely, I think that there is... Um, maybe not a quantifiable at this stage because it's a bit early on but we are seeing very much an interactivity coming on board uh, we even had one women some women starting to write in the forums getting comfortable with sharing their opinions and their voice within the forums as well so look forward to seeing your growth over the next year yeah and thanks it's quite exciting yeah so. let us know how you guys keep expanding yeah definitely will do thanks for chatting with us thank you so much Nana.